Hello and welcome to our first app using the Ionic Creator. So your first step obviously is going to be to come out to the Creator website and get set up with a account. Now as I talked about in the getting started section, I'm going to be using Creator for my demonstrations. I will show you the code side of those if you're going to be working in Visual Studio using the Cordova. But uh, this is not a free tool. You will have to pay if you want to use the coding section. You can use just the layout section if you want for free. And I'll show you how you can do that and how you can build your UIs and download your project. Uh, but I prefer to work in Creator simply because I already have Visual Studio all set up for my Xamarin development. And it's a little tricky to get the two different project systems working on the same computer. So. Uh, to get us started, we're here in our creator. You can see I've got a couple of, of projects I've already worked on. Uh, but to get started, you'll click on New Project, and you'll give it a name. So this is our Hello World app, so I'm just going to name this Hello World. And then you can choose a project type, and there are four different ones in here. You can also choose uh, which Ionic platform you're wanting to target. Now, right now, you can see that the 3.2 uh, Ionic is in alpha, so not recommended. Stick with the 1.x Ionic. Uh, but if you choose a blank project, then you just get a regular old blank project to work with. As you can see, some of these are going to come already set up with menus, tabs, whichever one you want to choose. We'll go over how some of these things work. But we're just going to start with a blank project. So we'll click Create Project, and it will take us right into our Creator UI. So from this section, um, you can see we get a nice little layout of the phone. Up here, you can change that layout. So if you wanted to say, hey, I'm building for an Android phone. I want it to look like an Android phone. That looks like my Nexus 5. So you can switch between these two. You can also switch it over to a tablet. If you wanted to see what your device would look like on a bigger screen, that's very helpful. So just some, some layout items here. This Pages section is where each one of our different, uh, what Ionic calls pages, live. And so as we build apps that have multiple pages, you'll see them over here on the side, including things like menus and, and containers that we're going to use to store that kind of information. All of our components or our tools that we can use for our interface are located here in the components section. When we have a particular page selected, there are some different properties and things that we can modify. So that all happens over here on the left. So here we can see the name of our page. We'll talk a little bit more about what some of these different things do. Um, and then we can always convert this over to HTML. So when we start working with a couple of different controls or if we want manual control over the HTML, we can convert these kind of Ionic Builder pages to HTML if we want. But it's not a uh, backwards reversible process. So you want to make sure that once you convert it to HTML that that's what you want because there's no going back. And then, of course, this is where you can delete a page. Let's say you've been messing with it and you decide you don't want it anymore, you can delete it from here. So up here on the top, we have some other tools that we can use. This um, is our build section, and then this is our preview. So when we click preview, it's going to launch your app into a little preview mode where you can demo it, click on your buttons, use radios, sliders, all the different things, play with your menus, make sure that they work the way that you want them to work. So this gives you kind of a, a built-in emulator for your apps, and, and that way it makes it a little easier, um, especially if you don't have a device that you um, can plug in and, and use, or if your computer, you know, especially with some of our other platforms, has a really hard time running some of those built-in emulators. So this is probably the easiest way to go about this. So you can just click off of that to come back to our builder view, and then I want to point out these icons that are up here at the top right. So the first one is our theming section. So uh, Ionic supports some theming and our SCSS. So if you are wanting to overwrite any of the Ionic styles and variables, which you can get from a link over here, you can get some examples, as well as the full documentation on GitHub of all of the SCSS variables that are used in Ionic, you can just start typing right in here, like a CSS external style sheet, and those will take. You can also change some of the main themes and colors and typography over here. So if you're wanting to change some of these default 
presets, you can do that here. Or you can come in and say, hey, I don't want this menu, or I wanted a different color, or I want to change the page background. That all happens in the one up here on the right that looks like a paintbrush. The next one looks like a cloud. It says export your app. So when we click on it, we get a couple of different options. Uh, the, probably the most important or the easiest one is the zip. So if you download your project as a zip file, you will get all of the project files and code and everything you would need to then open it in Visual Studio and use the Cordova, if that's what you want to do. Or if you have built your entire app in Creator and then you're ready to submit it for our assignment, you would just download the project zip and submit that. They also have some ways that you can upload your app directly to the App Store. Of course, you'll need to go through the tutorial and make sure you've already um, got an account and things set up. You can download it as a build package if you so choose to do so. Or you can um, test your project live with this Creator mobile app. So this is basically an app that you install on your device, so either iOS or Android, and then you can preview your project directly on the app and, and it creates this share code. So instead of having to use this emulator that's built into the browser, you can basically test the app directly on your device. So pretty cool. Welcome to try that out. Uh, it does work fairly well. I've used it on my Nexus 5 a couple of times. So this is just some basic things and we'll look at one of these zip files in a second after we've played with our app, but let's just go ahead and click off of that. The last one over here is the share. So if you want to share, and, and this is um, just the demo, so just what you would see in that little browser-based demo of your app, you can send this link to somebody, or you can enter a passcode so that you it's not just like public out there anywhere. You can also send it via email. So sharing the project does not share any of the code or your files or images or anything. It shares simply what the user sees if we click on um, sorry, the preview link up here at the top. So they get a window that looks like this and then they can demo your app and play with it, but they don't get any of the code behind. So that's not a suitable way, this share is not a suitable way to try to turn your work in. If you send me an email with this, all I'm going to get is a demo. I'm not going to get your code like I would if you come over here to export and download the project zip. So just keep that in mind if that's something that you're thinking about. Okay, so let's start by putting some controls on our page so that you can see how this works. Um, so let's say I just want a basic heading. I would grab this component and I would just drop it right onto the page. And then I can come over here and choose what I want it to say. So my first app, right, just whatever you want to put in there. You can change the size, you can change the color, you can align it. You can put in CSS style classes here if you want. Then let's say I want a paragraph. So I'm going to come over here and pull down a paragraph. You can see that there is markdown allowed in these uh, paragraph sections. If you're not sure how to use the markdown, you can go up here to the help section and pull up the creator uh, documentation for the markdown. But we could just put some code in here. This is my first Ionic app. I built it with the creator. Right, whatever you want to put in there. And so we can see that that shows up as a nice little paragraph in here. Now at this point, you can go ahead and, and check it out, right? Click preview. And so we can see this is what our app would look like uh, for our user. And maybe you also want an image. So we can pull an image control over. And then you can decide if you want to upload an image or you can switch to text input if you're providing the URL to a publicly available image. If we want to upload an image, we select upload and then we'll get the upload window where we can choose a file. And I'm going to choose a file that I have on my desktop of Pusheen because if you know me, you know I like Pusheen. All right, so now we can see what our app looks like. All right, we get our text we get our image. So at this point, if we wanted to uh, turn this in as our first uh, app made with the Ionic Creator, we would come over here to the export and we would download the project zip. So I now have a zip file that I can open. So here are the files that were downloaded and we can see that we have 
uh, a nice file structure here. So let's talk about what goes on inside of an Ionic project. So the first thing we'll see here is there's an index.html file. And if we actually open this up, let me open this with Notepad so you can see. This is just a basic HTML file. Now this is the file that is opened when uh, your Ionic project first loads. Actually, let's try that in Visual Studio because that looks pretty messy. There, that's a little nicer to read. Um, so you can see that it's pulling in the Ionic JS it needs, the Cordova, our style sheet information. It's got some styles built into the document. It's pulling in the JavaScript controllers, routes, directives, and everything that we need. So this is kind of, it's, it's like a master controller page, right? But we don't actually do anything to this index page. It comes with our project. So looking through the folders that are in here, we can see the image folder contains that image that I uploaded. Uh, the JS contains a couple of different JavaScript files that we can look at. So the first one is our app.js. And if we look at the comments up here, it gives us some help on what we're doing with some of these various JavaScript files. So our Angular module that is set up up here is our global place for creating any further code modules that we might need. And since Ionic is built off of the Angular platform, it uses this um, model view controller type way of, of doing things. And, and you'll want to make sure and look over the lesson that I've put out there on kind of how Ionic works to help you um, make a little more sense of that if you're not familiar with the MVC way of doing things. But all this code in here, this is basically what's used to, to make the app run. All right, so any controllers that we will have created or uh, when we get to the coding section, this is where code goes, is inside of our controller. Right, this controller is set up just for our main page that we have. But we don't have any code in this application. We didn't put any code into Creator. Um, we're not doing anything with that application. So this controller, right, this function, is empty. If you have any directives, those would go in the directives.js file. Right now you can see it's just blank. There's no directives. And then routes is what tells the Ionic system which pages to load and which controllers are in charge when we start moving around and creating multiple pages inside of our application. So right now you can see we just have page one um, and it's set up using that page control controller. And if there is no page given, if the user is trying to navigate around inside, then our default is always page one. So as we move into multiple pages, you'll see how this uh, routes file works a little better. But right now, since there's just one page, there's nothing to route to. The last one is services. So if you have any factories or services, outside modules that you're using and, and dependencies for your, your project, those would go in here. So right now there's, there's nothing going on in there, as you can see. And then coming back over to our file, right, our lib contains all of the main Ionic things that we need. And then templates. So templates is where our pages that we create actually live. So this is our page.html. This is the actual page that we're seeing when we load the app. So we can see there's that image, that machine image. There's that uh, little text paragraph block I created. And there's that heading I created. Now Ionic, being built on Angular, is just HTML. And so we can see some very familiar HTML style tags in here. Right? So like I said, if you want to build your UIs in Creator, then download the zip, you're going to get all of these files, and then you can start building your JavaScript code out here in your JavaScript files that it gives you if you don't want to pay for Creator. Because if we come back over to the Creator, the code section is down here at the bottom. Right? We click on this code, and we get this pop-up window. If you, don't have, uh, oops, if you don't have a paid subscription to Creator, you won't be able to access this section down here. But when we get into writing some code and things, I'll, I'll give you a little more tour of the coding section and where we put our Angular directives. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. So this has been our little getting started video. Hopefully you can come in and create um, kind of a basic Hello World application to show that you have everything working. You can come in and build your, uh, your app and do your presentation for the discussion board. And of course, if you're having any trouble, please feel free to uh, send me an email or um, leave me a comment. And that way 
I can uh, try to help you get it sorted out. So uh, once you've got this done, you can go ahead and start moving on to the next lesson where we're going to look at how to use some of these various controls and then of course starting to write some code so that we can make uh, some more interesting apps.